Hi, today I will show you how to use the ESP-based microcontroller WeMOS to control some LED lighting using your mobile phone. In my last video I have shown you how to use the ESP module as an Arduino device. Since then many things have changed. This WeMOS D1 Mini shown up. They have already this serial programmer included and also some voltage regulation. So the only thing you have to do is just to connect this to your PC program it and have some fun. They are also very cheap. I got this one for $2.60. So it's not worth to uh, do all the other stuff. Just buy a Wemos D1 and use it. Since I've also promised to show how to control some lighting using the ESP, um, I will use this LED strip today. This is one of the more expensive RGB LED strips, but it's totally worth it. It is based on the LEDs WS2812B. They have a control circuit integrated. You have just to provide 5 volts and the data in, which is chaining up all the LEDs. You have to be careful where to connect the data in. You have to connect it from this side and it's sending data to this side. As a first step I will show how to set up the IDE, upload a sketch that's controlling these LEDs. If you don't have installed it yet, you need the Arduino IDE, which is the development environment. You go to Arduino CC, Downloads, and then choose the installer you need. I have already installed it. To be able to use the ESP with the Arduino environment, you have to add something in the preferences here. So, additional boards manager, and you can add this URL. You can find all links in the description below. Then you have to install the board. You go to the boards manager, type ESP and this ESP8266 uh, by ESP community is showing up. You just take the latest version and install it. When it's finished, you can choose your board from the list below here. So we have a Wemos D1 Mini. So we select it and now we have to connect it. The connected device shows up as a new serial port here. I will select it. With the installed ESP board you also get some examples. Down below here you get the Blink program. We will just upload it. As you can see the LED is blinking. So now we need a sketch to control the LEDs that we have. Since the other Fruit NeoPixel devices are also based on WS2812B, we can use their library to control our strip. But you need to install the library first. You go to Sketch and then include Library and Manage Libraries. Then you just type NeoPixel. Here it is. I have already installed it. You can just close then if you have finished installing it and then load the example sketch here. You find it under Other Fruit NeoPixel and then we want a strand test. It shows up like this. On the top you have the definition of the data pin that's controlling the LED strip. It says 6. On Arduino devices this works well, but when you are using the WeMOS you have to be careful there, because the mapping of the actual number and the data pin isn't that way. You can see it on the website. It states like D4 here, but D4 is connected to GPIO2. So the correct number would be 2 if we want to use D4. But you can also just type D4. Since my LED strip is 5 meters long, I have 300 LEDs on it. So I have to change the count as well. Like this. Now I can just upload the sketch. Finished. Let's connect the LED strip. The USB port can't provide enough current for this LED stripe. So I will connect this everything to my bench power supply. I will also power the BMOS from this 5 volts. We have two extra wires here, but they are also connected uh, to this connector here. 
So I will connect ground first, then the 5 volts. There is a 5 volt pin here. And then the data, which is D4. I will turn on my bench power supply with the maximum current set and 5 volts. As you can see it draws almost 2 times 2 amps, so 4 amps in total. That's really much. But it looks gorgeous. To use it more silently I will use this external 18 volts power supply and this DC converter. I put this together myself. Let's power it up. Ah, this silence. This is really much better now. Now we can take it to the next step to control it over Wi-Fi. As a good starting point for our Wi-Fi sketch, we can use an example from ESP8266 web server and we take the hello server. There we have a simple web server implemented. You need to enter the name of your Wi-Fi network here and the password here. This example implements a basic web server that's running on the ESP and serving some pages over Wi-Fi. The ESP needs to connect to your Wi-Fi so you have to enter the name of your Wi-Fi network here and the password here. When the device is powered up it starts with the setup. It's connecting to your access point and printing some information like the connection status and the IP to the serial port. We can use the serial monitor to read it while it's connected to the PC. The MDNS would usually give you ESP a specific domain name, like ESP8266 here. But this seems not to work with my router. I will use the IP instead. At the end of the setup there is specified what pages are served. We have the root here which blinks the LED and displays a simple message. Then we have a simple inline example. It shows how to write your code just in place. And there is the response that's served when the page is not recognized. This one is interesting because it also shows the arguments that you are sending. They are useful when we want to send some values like the pin number. I will set my Wi-Fi credentials and then we can upload the example and test it. I have opened the serial monitor and as you can see we got an IP and I am connected to my Wi-Fi network here. Most of the routers will try to give you the same IP every time. If they are not, you probably can configure it in the settings of your router. But that's out of scope here. Now we can test if the server works. I will try inline now. This works as well. We can also test handle not found when we type something that's not recognized like on and add some parameters like pin d4. As you can see it says file not found and also it shows the arguments pin d4. So this is what this function did. Now we have to add some code from the strand test to use the LED strip. So let's see. We need this line to include the library, the pin, The global strip, this initialization, I will put it to the end so it's only initialized when the server is running. Then I will replace inline by rainbow. I need some functions like this one and this one and then we can call rainbow20 here. It will respond first and then run the rainbow cycle. I will put in the handle root simply the definition what's possible with this server. 
Let's try it. I will check if the server is up and running. Yes. And try rainbow. Doesn't it look great? I love it. I will add some more functionality to the sketch. So we can also turn it off and dim up and down and so on. Afterwards we can set up the mobile phone to control it. Here is the device with the new sketch that I have implemented and we can use the mobile phone. Obviously you have to be connected to the same Wi-Fi. Then uh, it's easy to use the browser. You can see here on the root there are all the functions listed that you can use and some descriptions with uh, the arguments that you can set and so on. Let's try our rainbow function here. You can see there is some fading implemented, so the current state is faded in. We can also fade over, like let's try the wave. The wave uses a one specified color. You can also set them just to one color, like this, or disable them like this. Now let's make it more convenient. Therefore we need an app. It is also available for Apple devices. It's called HTTP request widget. This one. Now we can use it to create widgets on our screen. I will create one here. It should be a wave that's faded over in 5 seconds and it's an orange-like color. Let's call it wave. And then it's created. We'll also add a button to turn it off. this. Now let's try. And then turning it off. Easy! The sketch is also capable of controlling the other pins like writing PWM or just turning off and on. This way we can also control amplifiers and relays, so everything can be automated at your home. I will put a link to the code and to the other stuff that you need. Um, the other stuff that you need uh, in the description below. Um, second. If you like this video then share it, subscribe to my channel and maybe support me on Patreon. I gotta go now. Bye.